So welcome to the last part. I have prepared some issues here. And let's see. Some questions? <laughs> The first question is, what is the state of cloud computing in Switzerland today? Um, where is it heading for the next one or two years? And I would like to give that to the, you from Rackspace. Okay. Well, so um, I think at, at, the, at this point there's a lot of exploratory activity. Um, you know, on all fronts. So, I see, uh, I saw, I see a lot of companies, um, like even uh, like uh, uh, offices, just just uh, trying to figure out uh, how they can benefit from making a, a making use of the cloud. Okay, and um, so speaking with my OpenStack head on, okay, I think uh, one uh, one big advantage that an open and free cloud. Uh, has over others is that it is very uh, flexible in terms of, uh, in terms of how it can be deployed. So, like a company that uh, wants to experiment with, 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 with their cloud, you can just take OpenStack, mm -hmm. spin up in all the a couple of spare machines, and get going and learn and figure out yeah. how, how to use it. I think that's one big advantage that, uh, that we have in, in that respect. Okay. Well, uh, uh, from my point of view, we. Uh, it has quite a lot changed since, since a year. Mm -hmm. A year ago, uh, cloud was discussed, but not really used with some examples, mm -hmm. where, for example, Swiss in, uh, in our, uh, but there were very few examples of real use. In the last year, I saw uh, quite a lot of uh, small usages beginning to start and there are quite a lot of projects going on studying uh, a broader access to a cloud computing. I guess it, it's uh, quite a lot uh, increasing now. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is definitely skyrocketing. skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. Where are we going? Well, I can only give the, let's say, the academia perspective, or at least my interpretation of the academia perspective. Um, also in the academia, cloud is becoming one of the established reality. Uh, regardless of whether we try or we manage or, or we can organize it in a way or another, the researcher and uh, the, the students are adopting services, cloud services at all scales, irrespective, as I said, of uh, uh, the, the recommendation from the IT service because how should I not move your data outside of the university or something on this line. So this is happening anyhow. Mm -hmm. And it's happening at a very fast uh, pace uh, because this is a very vibrant market and there are new products coming out all the time. And uh, keeping up with, the, with, the, with this pace uh, for, for a provider, for an IT provider locally that is trying to organize these services for the research infrastructure is extremely difficult. But having said that, our experience is that the university moves very, very slowly and iter confirmed. <laughs> so one, two years from now, it's pretty much nothing changes. Okay. Because as I said, it's just taken a, as an example, the, the uh, average purchase cycle of a medium-sized computational infrastructure is three to four years. Mm -hmm. So one, two years, nothing changes. Okay. And uh, in order to start planning the next infrastructure, one starts a couple of years before with the experience from what is running actually so mm -hmm. it will take much much longer for the providers mm -hmm. to adopt but for what is on the users it's already happening at many levels yeah. uh, the apache project joining through a uh, cloud stack wh what do you think where will it lead in one or two years well, you know, first, you know, I agree that it's uh, it's still exploratory, but at the same time, we're seeing um, production, you know, clouds coming up. Just uh, Exoscale in Lausanne has mm -hmm. launched a public cloud on, on CloudStack. I just learned today about uh, I know Open Swiss Cloud at CH 
that's, uh, that's launching uh, just at the break. Swiss TXT apparently has a cloud stack private cloud. I know Orange CH also has a private cloud on cloud stack. So, it, you know, still exploratory phase, but at the same time, there are more and more people, you know, making that step and actually going production. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just going to keep on increasing. Okay. I see. No. What already has been said in uh, the presentation, I see quite a big gap between, as you also said, users and IT. Users are already using quite a lot, mm -hmm. also. Not, not private users, also uh, in our government, governmental users, but not the IT part. Mm. They are already now quite a lot using it, beginning to use it, I but IT departments mm. are quite uh, conservative. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in that part, it will last a little bit longer mm. till they uh, see that they have to Otherwise, they are out of business. So maybe just um, if a, a comment on, on a, what trends like the next couple of years. I think uh, uh, the open source cloud will will win eventually. Okay. So because uh, I compare to, when I think of Linux, uh, Linux one Linux today dominates the uh, list of the 500 strongest supercomputers in the world. It dominates the mobile space with Android. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you have, if you basically have a popular movement, if you have people from all kinds of companies, all kinds of walks of life contribute to a project, it will actually, it will eventually win. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, again, by looking at OpenStack in, in the last six months, we had like 517 committers. It's a huge force yeah. of people who contribute to the project. And these are not like hobbyists. These are, these are fully paid developers who. Mm -hmm. who who just do this all day long, okay? And basically, the the foundation uh, member list of OpenStack uh, reads like the who's who in the IT industry. Yeah. With some notable absences, but nevertheless. Sure. And uh, I mean, I think going forward in a couple, in, in one two years, I mean, you know, the the momentum, the wave will, will only increase. You already answered my ne next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but what are the major challenges? Because that. It's also important to understand what will be the challenges that we probably have to overcome. Yes. So, so the ones I see is um, uh, education. Uh, so I mean, we've heard this a couple of times today. Like you can't take your existing application and just deploy it on the cloud and and it will work. So uh, applications that need to be deployed in the cloud need to be uh, like architecturally different, much more resilient, much more asynchronous. Uh, then again, uh, the failure uh, uh, monitoring, all, all of this. So learning mm -hmm. how to how to take applications and put them in the cloud. I think security uh, when, when it comes to public cloud, security is an issue yes. as well. So there, there, needs, there needs to be a lot of work uh, until we are sort of confident that the public cloud is secure to a degree where we can deploy, uh, you know, stuff. Yeah. Like uh, well, I guess also. Uh, well, we've talked before. Uh, what I see that uh, OpenStack has uh, grown enormously. Some two years ago, it was uh, an academic exercise, mm -hmm. I would say, not very much more. Now it has become uh, a major uh, part, uh, a major player, a major, in force, yes. major force. But there is a part for me still for. Uh, real use and uh, it's somewhat too difficult, mm -hmm. too, too complex. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, it, uh, we have to get a grip of the complexity mm -hmm. of the whole stuff to make it really uh, make a, a major force. But I'm quite uh, confident that it will happen. You said there are, is now, uh, there are many people behind it mm -hmm. and also, uh, Apache and all these uh, organizations will help. Uh, but there is, and the other stuff is, well, uh, there are the other players, VMware and Co. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, the open development has to be better. Can we, from the education side, help? Yes, if I, if I also might first uh, add a couple of comments to what 
you just said I couldn't agree more with what you said, but we already see another possible challenge here into this type of discussion because you said open stack is becoming the de facto standard, but we also have cloud stack and we also have other infrastructure that are emerging and the Intel But Nebula European project. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the 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 pushing for an open infrastructure, I think it's uh, it's critical. And whether and uh, which direction this push will take will probably become a bottleneck, a restraint, or something that will favor the, the, the adoption of this. At the, at the, from the educational uh, domain, yes, it's, uh, as, uh, as I try to explain in my talk, for us it becomes, it's one of the fundamental points to somehow push for um, changing the way most of the, in our case, the research community works. And this goes down to the um, to the to the educational level. So also establishing programs within um, within the, the university educational system to start to um, um, redefine a little bit the, the teaching mm -hmm. of uh, how to support computational science. Do you think we would have to go lower even, like on on a gymnasium level, like college level, regard. get these people more involved? <laughs> Well, uh, yes, kindergarten, because my son knows uh, how to use an iPad much better than I do, so <laughs> the sooner the better to a certain extent. Okay. If, if I can comment on the, uh, the adoption, you know, uh, if I think about a company that has a traditional IT processes mm -hmm. and traditional infrastructure, you know, they need to find a path to evolve that infrastructure and those processes to more of a cloud uh, setup. Some of their application may not be a good fit for a cloud uh, you know, workflow, so they may have to, to keep that traditional uh, IT. And at the same time, they also need to provide that cloud service for you know, uh, their developer uh, build and test, or if they are a service provider to provide on-demand services. So it's really an evolution of traditional IT towards more you know, on-demand, elasticity, automation, that needs a lot of training, lots of change of thoughts on the, uh, the IT professionals, change of tooling, you know, I mean, whether it's configuration management or uh, APIs, programming. So there, there are lots of things to learn, I mean, not only for students, but for the IT professionals. And when you look at all the, all the tooling, you know, LibCloud, Delta Cloud, I mean, it can become overwhelming, yeah. okay? Lots of tools out there. What, what would the government say? Would the government ask the universities and our university, for example, to do more in that area, so we can better support future ideas? Certainly yes, certainly yes, but uh, I have some other point, not only, uh, you've talked about the technical details, what we see is what we need in the future are people that think in terms of composition, of integration of existing components not uh, being uh, focused on developing everything themselves. Mm -hmm. That's for me a very important part, that uh, people that uh, now that you are forming, that, uh, that they have in their head the uh, setting that they see themselves as composer, as integrator, of existing services. Leverage and utilize what exists out there. Exactly, yeah. Or and improve. Yeah, and improve and fill in the missing gaps. Mm -hmm. Because as you said, we will have on-premise uh, applications, we will have them in uh, 20 years, yeah. but also those applications will be uh, a composition of existing parts. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's, a, that's a, a change of mind that's very important and that ha has to uh, be, uh, uh, well, initiated by your part. Because if you form people that want to develop everything themselves, yeah. we afterwards have problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the, uh, on the components, I mean, that's probably one of the, the, the biggest issues with the system, whether it's OpenStack or Open Nebula or CloudStack that the people uh, deploying those systems, they need to be you know, network expert, they need to be uh, operating system expert, application. I mean, you don't have to be an expert in everything, but there is a very large knowledge to understand so that you can configure those systems properly. And that's a big change from just being uh, you know, uh, application.
application developer or yeah. sysadmin, you know, it's yeah. much more encompassing. Yeah, we need new pictures of jobs that the yeah. firm will do. And we need to bring that back yeah. to the education level. I think, I think we have some role models in the IT industry today. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you look at some of the like, um, uh, most prominent uh, IT companies, mm -hmm. they're actually doing this. Yeah. So they use open source, they, 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 uh, they take existing uh, services and components and leverage them, uh, to, uh, and uh, they reap a big benefit from that. Yeah. I mean, uh, look at Instagram. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was sold to Meta for a billion uh, bucks. Yeah. Look at the system. Yeah. It's all sort of open source and chewing gum and, and duct tape. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's not that this is alien to us. We just need to sort of, you know, maybe put these people more front, front and center. Yes. Uh, well, the question was uh, what they can do. And I agree also uh, very much on your point. It's for me, uh, people that you form have to be mu much more generalists. Mm -hmm. They have to know something for, of network, of uh, operation, not only development. Yeah. Uh, that's very important because, uh, uh, well, we suffer because we have people that are only operators. Mm -hmm. They see operating and they don't want for them developers that's uh, some, some kind like devils. <laughs> The enemy, yeah. and the networking people, they they are special. Uh, uh, they don't. Uh, they say, well, operators, well, uh, they don't know very well their tasks, mm -hmm. and so on. That that's a, a big problem at the moment, and that's important that uh, that you form people that have basic knowledge in all these domains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brings me to the last question. What I mean, makes I mean, things open? Let me just comment on, on, on this uh, yep. very, very quickly. I mean, there's certain, uh, like, uh, certain movements, like the DevOps movement, mm -hmm. which came up to address uh, and tear down these barriers. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is something you can address, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, utilize. Sorry. But, you know, I think I, I, I agree with you as well on the, uh, you know, like, industry is doing this. Yeah. And if you look at Google, you know, Google Summer of Code, for example, that's a great, you know, teaching mm -hmm. program. Basically, interns all over the world they're working remotely. Uh, I'm mentoring some students. I have one in Vietnam and one in Ireland and one in Florida. So those guys are working remotely and then they have to learn all the open source techniques, you know, Git, IRC, I mean, mm -hmm. and then understand how to develop uh, in collaboration in different time zones. So yeah, all those tools need to be taught and maybe at you know, the university, uh, you know, we, we could do a better job of em embedding students within open source projects. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. In fact, the, it's amazing the fact. It's amazing that uh, something so successful like the Google Summer Code, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's pr pr promoted by Google. Yeah. And uh, if you look back at the uh, at the universities, at schools, and everything, in order to do the, the mind change, mm -hmm. uh, this type of approach it takes uh, it takes much more. It takes much more time. Yes. yes, we are more in the ten year cycle to get these things rolling. Yeah. yeah. So we have a delay here and we need to speed up. Last question, what makes open cloud or what makes a cloud open? Open source. So maybe Is it open source only? Yeah. So, I mean, I think people are still debating what a cloud is actually. <laughs> and then debating what an open cloud is, is sort of the meta debate. <laughs> but uh, if, I, if, if I may try and attempt uh, a definition, I would say an open cloud has to be, it has to be free. Uh, it, it has to come with a free license, it has to be open source, and it, it, and it has to have uh, multiple public uh, providers. Mm -hmm. So allowing you basically to, to, to switch between these providers if you need to. If you like my attempt has to be done. Well, you've given me with your last sentence uh, my major point. Mm -hmm. For me, that is open source, that's uh, some background impact. For me, the most, imp uh, well, I'm speaking for government. Mm -hmm most important point for me is that I have different uh, providers with the same open mm -hmm. interface. Mm -hmm. For me that's the most important part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's hard to be done without open sourcing. That's, uh, but for me the open multiple useful interface mm -hmm. is the most important uh, uh, attribute, mm -hmm. I would say, that I uh, mm -hmm. uh,
connect with open cloud. Yeah. yeah, I think more or less I, I I tend to agree, especially for the for the open interfaces part. Um, I don't know whether the emphasis should be placed on the open interfaces of the cloud or on the let's say uh, on the perception of an open system that um, a client library like the LibCloud might allows you to when, when it allows you to programmatically integrate various cloud, uh, cloud type. Certainly, from from the from the perspective of the computational research, the most important thing is that whatever code I write, whatever application I try to integrate, have a common ground layer that I can count on and I can migrate my tools and my solutions to a provider to another in a most transparent manner. Then whether this happens underneath because of open APIs or because of uh, standardization. Yes, that's uh, for me, yeah. For me well yeah. Well uh, for me it's uh, not only be uh, able to uh, change providers mm -hmm. but also to be able to compose services in a, a sustainable way <laughs> so that I have a conglomerate of services where also I can exchange some part of it if necessary. For example, because a provider goes out of business, yeah. I have to exchange the, that part. It's not only lock-in, well, that's also kind of lock-in, but I have to uh, be able to uh, provide a sustainable service composed of different services behind it, behind the scene. Uh, you know, to me, I, I kind of agree, but uh, the standardization issue could be a, a long discussion. Mm -hmm. To me, it's really the concept that uh, open source is leading the, uh, the cloud innovation, you know, whatever software you choose. Uh, but you see that, you know, whether it's uh, YAS, PAST, uh, uh, configuration management, whatever, you know, open source has really become the where the innovation is and, and where uh, industry is, uh, is looking at to, for their solutions. And of course, software vendors, because you want support, but the actual uh, software is open source. Okay, so that is the conclusion of today's session, and thank you very much for participating in the panel. Thank you.